Will next-gen smartwatches read your blood sugar? Delaying diabetes through immunotherapy and swapping daily injections for a bag of beta cells. All that and more coming up in your T1D News Update. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Lowe and welcome back to my channel and your T1D News Update. It's been a good start to 2021 with loads of exciting research and technology developments. And speaking of which, I'm actually going to be trying out a brand new CGM system, a low waste CGM right here on my channel. So drop a like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything. But without wasting any more time, let's get into the news. Those Apple Watch rumors are on the way, so do stay tuned to the end of the video. But first, today, we are a step closer to giving up those daily injections. Novo Nordisk, the Danish pharma company, working with a US startup, Procyon Technologies, are planning to produce an implantable device containing insulin-producing cells grown from stem cells. This new partnership should speed up the development process and help get the project into clinical trials sooner. The pioneering treatment is being worked on by research teams across the world with JDRF funded research happening at the University of Arizona. Essentially, by implanting the cells in a protective container, the treatment would keep them safe from the immune attack that causes type 1 diabetes. So we all know, I assume, that our bodies kill off beta cells. That's why we become diabetic. So this, this um, encapsule, this, this little bag that they're gonna put them in, will protect these beta cells from our bodies. However, the science is challenging. It requires expertise in growing insulin producing cells and in creating the special containers that protect the cells from the immune system. Novo Nordisk has invested in stem cell technology since 2008, while Procyon Technologies co-founder Dr. Cleokos Papas, who has led research funded by JDRF into encapsulization for almost a decade now. So these two teams pooling their knowledge means we'll know quicker whether this is a viable treatment method. However, after speaking to Professor Colin Dyan, who um, recently I spoke to for a Diabetes UK event, regrowing lost beta cells is another exciting avenue, but more on that in just a moment. So the big question, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected you? For me, my insulin sensitivity is a nightmare. The dawn effect regularly ruins my day. And honestly, I feel like I've fallen out of touch with my healthcare team. But those experiences are gonna help our advocates to make things better. JDRF is asking you to share your experiences of life affected by type one diabetes during the COVID-19 pandemic, which will help them to improve the support and information that they provide. For many people living with type one diabetes, the pandemic has added another layer of complexity. It's brought extra challenges when it comes to managing health and well-being, but has also brought welcome opportunities for some other areas, such as greater use of digital appointments. So JDRF are looking for around 300 people who wanna share their experiences and fill out a, a short 20 minute questionnaire and possibly even take part in a 45 minute telephone interview or video call. The survey closes on the 8th of March. So my patrons who are seeing this video on Wednesday, you've got a few days to get it, uh, to get involved. But everyone seeing this on Friday, you've got until Monday the 8th. So uh, get a wriggle on. I'll put a card on the screen uh, and you'll be able to find the link in the description below if you wanna take part. Next up today, the Type 1 Diabetes UK Immunotherapy Consortium was set up in 2015 with major funding from both Diabetes UK and JDRF to promote, develop and support immunotherapy research in Type 1 diabetes. Since then, they have established a network of 24 research sites strategically distributed across the UK to recruit children and adults into clinical trials of new immunotherapy treatments. And I recently hosted an event all about immunotherapy for Diabetes UK, a virtual one, obviously, with it being uh, still in the midst of a pandemic. So uh, I spoke to Professor Colin Diane, who leads the consortium, and he described what's going on in terms of research into immunotherapy treatments 
and most importantly, how people can get involved in that research. So I've dropped a few links to current trials that are currently recruiting, that, that will all be in the description box below. But essentially what they're doing is using different drugs to attempt to delay a diabetes diagnosis. Now this could be the difference between a diagnosis at the age of 10 instead of the age of five. And the thinking there is a later diagnosis would mean that the family and the child is more prepared and will manage the condition better. Plus, the research going on is revealing more and more information to scientists all the time about type one diabetes itself, which will help them on the way to finding a cure. It really is uh, an interesting conversation. We talked about why people become diabetics and uh, other treatments, including regrowing lost beta cells. So if you wanna hear the full conversation, it'll be on the Diabetes UK YouTube channel next week. And a segment will be coming out in my podcast, which I'm set to release in a few weeks time. Okay, finally then, I'm really excited about this story. If it turns out to be true, I am absolutely going to be buying one on the day of release, and I don't care how much it costs. If you listen to the rumors online, then we should be able to expect the next Apple Watch, the Series 7, to include a blood glucose monitor. It's what all the Mac rumor blogs are saying right now, and I guess it is the logical step after the, the Apple Watch Series 6 brought a blood oxygen sensor. The last few watches were announced in September of their respective years, so you know, it's a bit of a wait, but we can expect the same in this case. So these rumors then, they center around reports that have surfaced this year, suggesting an Apple Watch can track blood glucose, and that could be on the way to the market very, very soon. According to Chinese news site ET News, Apple is testing reliability and stability of the functionality before launch. I think that was an accidental poem there. The ability to offer non-invasive blood glucose monitoring from the wrist would mark a major breakthrough for wearables. It's something that Apple has been apparently exploring for some time now and having brought on a team of scientists to look at the potential for such a device, it was also a passion point for the late Steve Jobs during his time at Apple and I think back in 2017. Tim Cook was spotted te testing out a form of, a, not a non-invasive, but he was definitely wearing a sensor. Maybe it was a Dexcom, I don't really know. But I have previously been approached by companies testing out apps that use light and a smartphone camera to take a blood glucose reading. I'm not really sure what happened to them. So maybe that's gonna be how it will work, but we, we don't really know right now, do we? Who knows? But if it happens, it will be revolutionary. And if Apple is working on it, you can bet Samsung too is gonna be having a similar feature. The Galaxy Watch 4 is also rumored to be having the same sort of thing, but no word yet on its next launch. Um, and the Samsung watches are typically a little pricier than Apple's. But as soon as any new developments happen, you can be sure that I'll be talking about it. So do subscribe to this channel for more updates. And that is the latest news in the Type 1 world. Thank you so much for watching and spending a few minutes with me to get caught up on the world. Don't forget, if you wanna know more information on one of these stories, then um, you can let me know in the comments box below. And if you haven't already, please give this video a like and follow me on all of my social media. There is a brand new episode of my podcast, The Awful One Podcast, out right now. We're talking about the coronavirus vaccine, its impact on people with type 1 diabetes, um, and we're also talking about how to make and achieve your goals. So if you want to check that out, you can watch it here on YouTube. It's my last video, or you can download it in Apple Podcasts or Spotify and any other podcast app. There is also a link to it in the description box below where you can also find a link to my Patreon where for just one pound a month, you can support me to make uh, more and better type one diabetes content and um, my merch shop. So my Teespring and Spreadshirt shops where you can wear diabetes designs scribbled uh, by me, my own drawings on, on everything from a mug to a mask and a t-shirt. But that is just about it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. But for now, bye-bye.